really don't know what happened. I mean, our guys are trained to, to basically hover over people when they're shooting. And, uh, you know, if they're shooting right-handed, we have our right hand behind them ready to push the weapon out of the way. And if they're left-handed, the same thing. An unbelievable story out of Arizona yesterday. It has to do with a nine-year-old girl. Tiny little thing. She was shooting an Uzi at a place called Burgers and Bullets. That's the place that that uh, gentleman was referring to. This is a place where uh, a lot of Vegas tourists, people who visit Las Vegas, get flown out to the deserts of Arizona, and they can visit for a family tour and shoot off some guns. This went horribly wrong. The young girl, as the, auto, as the weapon was switched to automatic, reared up the gun and ended up shooting her instructor and that instructor ended up dying. But of course, a lot of anti-gun advocates have decided that they are going to make this yet another whipping boy, a whipping story for their cause. Tony Bernardo joins me to talk about this. Tony, I see this as nothing more than an accident. There are a lot of great gun ranges across this country and across the United States of America where these kind of accidents just don't happen. Yeah, that, the reason this is a newsworthy story is because it's so rare. Uh, you know, there are, we, we've maintained for years that the shooting as, is a family activity and every day across Canada, across the United States, families go shooting. They have very, very few accidents. The reason this is newsworthy is because of its rarity. Let's talk about the age, because you talk about families, and I had a couple of callers to my radio program yesterday yeah. that said, listen, I, I just bought my five-year-old a rifle uh, for his birthday. I bought yeah. my six-year-old a rifle for their birthday. These are people who respect the weapon, and, you know, one caller actually went through the fact that his young man, his little five-year-old, opened the gun, backed away from it, asked if it was loaded, and went through complete proper procedure before doing anything with the weapon. There are a lot of great gun owners out there, people who respect the weapon and instill that upon their kids. Yeah, and that's absolutely true. By the way, just, just for your own clarity, in Canada we call them firearms. Weapons are things that are used to hurt people, and we don't do that here. Uh, so uh, we, we always term them firearms. But, you know, this is a family activity. And, yes, there are whole genres of firearms that have been made for children. I mean, this, look at the Red Ryder BB gun, you know, the, the famous Christmas story Red Ryder BB gun. You don't think that was designed for an adult, do you? No, absolutely not. So break, break, right. down, break down for me, of course, what went wrong here in this circumstance. Well, you know, it, it, it's difficult to second guess it, but you can see that the instructor uh, certainly ha is on the wrong side. I mean, he should have been on the other side of the, the child. He should have been behind the child. Uh, I, I would assume the child was not briefed on the fact that the muzzle would rise when, when the firearm went full automatic. Uh, you know, the, the, the thing is, is that there's just too many variables to be able to second guess it out of such a short YouTube clip. The bottom line is that in Canada, I mean, the, we, we have children shooting on ranges all the time. It's, it's just no big deal. It's a family activity. Does it change things for you when the firearm in question is an Uzi? I'm sorry, say that again? I said, does it change things for you at all or change the story at all for you when it comes to the, the, the uh, firearm itself uh, being an Uzi? Well, you know, I, I honestly can't say, given the fact that, that, that full automatic firearms in Canada are prohibited, we have very little experience teaching young people to shoot them. The fact is, though, all over the United States, there's all kinds of facilities where children can go with their parents and under immediate and direct adult supervision shoot these kind of firearms and accidents are unbelievably rare so you, you got to look at you know the em empirically has this been a problem in the past because the activity is certainly not new yeah it's not new and, and let me be completely straightforward i've gone to uh, las vegas where you can mm -hmm. go in and test a number of different firearms sure. at a range I, i've done it n multiple times it's sure. actually quite enjoyable and it gives you a, a different perspective it gives you a different respect for the firearm itself uh where you start to understand how it works the mechanisms uh yeah. the, the, the sort of science for lack of a better term that's in place when you're firing off that that firearm that that's right and and you know these are lessons that responsible firearms owners teach their children you know we 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 teach kids all about how to cross a street. We teach them about drug safety. We teach them about sexual predators and, and other things that could put 
potentially present a danger in their lives. Anyone who has firearms in the house and is responsible teaches their children about them, just like you would teach them about safety around a stove. You know, this is something that, that, that you teach children to generate respect and our safety record in Canada, which by the way is exemplary, proves beyond any shadow of a doubt that, that these lessons have been well learned. Do you, see that the re do you see the reaction differing from a story like this when it comes to uh, urban and rural people? Because I noticed a lot of the, the phone calls I got yesterday on the radio uh, were specifically from people who lived outside of the city of Toronto. Do you see yeah. there being a breakdown there? You know, there's an awful lot of shooters that live within the GTA. A lot of shooters live in the GTA. And, and in fact, the 905 has one of the highest concentrations of shooters anywhere in Canada. So, no. The, the, the breakdowns, uh, I think, are, are largely illusory. Let me ask you about the reaction on the, on the other side, those who oppose uh, firearms in any capacity. There are people out there that would have it so that nobody could own a firearm in this country. What do you think their reaction to a story like this is going to be? Will they try to push an agenda? Yeah, but it, 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 it's a red herring. I mean, they, they can try to push this agenda. But again, the fact that it's so rare is what makes it newsworthy. And were it not rare, then, uh, you know, people would, would have done something about it quite a long time ago. Um, I, don't, I don't think that it really has any traction in, in terms of the, the anti-gun groups. Now, you know, Canada already has laws mm -hmm. in, in regards to how young people and firearms interface with each other. I mean, this is something that a lot of people don't know, and they don't know it because it, people being having their attention drawn to this is so rare. Tony, we appreciate the time on this this morning. I'm sorry, say again? I appreciate the time on this this morning. Oh, well, no problem. I, I, I'm happy to, uh, to, to donate the time to you and uh, try, try to educate people as to what uh, the situation is really about. No, it's very important to get that information out there. There you go. Tony Bernardo. We're